All right, everybody. Welcome to episode five of the Game Addicts Podcast. I'm your host, Brando, right along with the good buddy, Mike. How you doing? Pretty good. How you doing? Oh, I've been doing pretty good. How you been enjoying your little uh, work shutdown? Not as much as I would hope. Lots of wedding stuff. Ah, uh, well, you know what? As, you know, speaking from experience, you know, that can get a little, you know, troublesome, tiring, stressful. Yeah, it's just getting everything organized and getting everything done is... It's mm-hmm. starting to be crunch, crunch time, so... It is, and, uh, you know, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Um, here, I've just been sort of kicking it back and trying to play some games when I can. Um, of course, uh, you know, recorded a couple podcasts last week. Uh, that was before shutdown. Over shutdown, we haven't done much. Uh, be seeing Nate in a few days on, on Saturday, so that'll be something. Uh, I played a little bit of Final Fantasy three. Oh yeah? Recently, I, I plugged that in. I, I've been meaning to get back to it. I've actually been playing a wrestling game, too, because I've had stuff in my head for a certain character that I've wanted to create. <laughs> uh, at work, I get bored. So, I mean, I'm, a, I'm an old-school wrestling fan here on the channel. Uh, you can definitely find the Journey to Wrestling show uh, and, and know that but just by knowing how much I know about the you know about wrestling. But I created a character, and then I created his dad. So <laughs> I, I had to go back, and I've been creating him, and I've been... Messing with him, of course, uh, I sort of made him, he started in the, like like the 70s, so there's a 70s version, there's a mid-80s version, a late 80s, early 90s version, and I'm still, I'm going to make it to where he retires in 2010. Yeah. <laughs> you and your wrestling. Dude, I got bored, okay? Since you don't work Clearly. down in our area anymore, like, there's not as many people to talk to. Yeah. And it's especially with the jobs that I work on, so I find myself trying to come up and be creative. And I'm either thinking of stuff to do for the podcast or trying, or, you know, I did that. I, I worked on that for like three days, just trying to figure out, uh, you know, his history, <laughs> who he is, his history. Because the character that he's that he's the father of, I've had him since 2001. Wow. So his is uh, basically what I do since he's a creative character. I'm like, where would he fit in the real world? Sort of. Sort of, kind of. Well, I... I do augment it a little bit. He does take the spot of some some people in major stuff as time goes on just to make him more relevant for my in head universe. Right. But so I trying to figure out where he is, where you know where does he go? What companies does he work for? What titles does he hold? Who does he feud with? Stuff like that. And then of course I'm trying to figure out what does he look like and then I already had versions of them, and so I, you know, throughout the years, I'm uh, I'm trying to do some stuff with that. So it, it it may sound crazy, but I'm like I'm playing FF3, and I'm like I'm just gonna make him make his tights. I'm gonna just see what his boots look like here. <laughs> yeah, it turns into <laughs> stupid stuff like that. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I would play more FF3, but unfortunately, yeah, I can't put it on like standby. Yeah, there, there are definite times where I'm like, yeah, I'm getting into this, and I hear, hey, come here. And it's like. Put the control down, walk out there, see what she wants, see, right. see, see what baby needs. So, um, I've been meaning to get back into Persona, and I did play a little bit of, of Persona um, last Saturday. I, I played some Persona on my way to Illinois. Is that the, uh, you're in the part where you're waiting for basically the actual game to catch up to where you're at? Yeah, and I actually, I did do something. Um, I'm actually getting ready to go back to school. In the, from the You're summer finally break. finally back to school. So I'm getting ready to. It's like I'm not in school. I think I've got like another week before school starts. But uh, I'm definitely uh, taking doing, advantage doing of... Doing character building. Well, doing character building, spending more time with people, getting my, my, my friendship levels with them higher so then I can craft new personas that they represent of a higher level. Right. So I've been meaning to get back to that, but man, for some reason I'm like, what do I play? And I'm like, eh, Final Fantasy 3, I need to play... And beat Final Fantasy III. I got so far into that on the PSP Go. Yeah. Uh, and then I sold it to you, and I haven't been able to get that far again because I've just been playing other stuff. But right. What have you been playing? Anything? Has there been time to play? Well, there hasn't. During shutdown, there hasn't been. I've probably put a, a couple of minutes into Sword Art. Um, I got Sword Art online. The um, long song, or last song. Lost song, I think. That lost song, yeah. And uh, I, it's fun. It, it reminds me of Explorers. It's more open, just definitely more graphical. Like you can definitely tell it. It's 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 very pretty, mm-hmm. and I like it. It's just it's a grind game. Yeah. As you know, grind games you got to have the time to grind, and you can't. You can put it on standby, but 
it's it's fun. I, I enjoy it, and I just haven't had time to really sit down. And there's a lot of elements to the game that I don't have mastered in my mind yet of how to build this and that. There's so Trust much. me, I'm still trying to figure out how exactly Persona building works. There's just these newer RPGs. They're really making them more in depth, where you actually have to be immersed in the world mental. Like you mm-hmm. have to think about it outside the game. So you said that you picked up uh, Sword Art. Is there anything like within the last uh, few weeks that you picked up other than that? Um, well, I picked up my PlayStation One yesterday. Oh, yeah, PS One Slim. Yeah, the PS One Slim. Um, for games, I picked up Armor Core Five. Armor Core Five. Vent, Ventura Day, I think it's Verdict Day. Verdict Day. I can't ever remember. We just shot. If, if anybody listens, yeah. we just shot a pit, like a big pickup video where both of us um, showcase the games that we picked up pretty much since April. And so, like, yeah, go check that out if you want that. They'll, I just wanted to, you know, quickly, you know, since we've been pretty much every episode, kind of say what we picked up. Um, I picked up uh, Demon's Crest. Yes. And. Uh, picked that up from a co-worker you know we, have you tested it yet have you yes it yet? i did i i started playing it and and, and it brought back so many memories um <laughs> well because i mean i totally that's a game i forgot about i totally forgot about it um it, it's, it's funny how you'll play a game and you'll rent it because back in the day that's kind of what you had to do to play games you i mean i didn't have money to buy games i didn't either. that's how i played super mario rpg uh so I you, know, it three times. you either rent it or you find a friend who has it and make a deal and borrow it well, uh, the my local grocery store uh, in my town of 600 people or less rented movies, and they started getting games. And so you go up there and you rent some games. And they had this game, and I ch- you know tried it out. It was hard, especially for me being a kid. Yeah. Um, but I played some of it, and I just still remember it starting off, and you go, what am I supposed to do? And just getting killed by that dragon, right? Beginning over and over again, because I just couldn't figure out what to do. Of course... I mean, I stomped that dragon when I played it. No, yeah, now you do. Stopped it. Like, I knew exactly what to do. But, I mean, that's just, it's a fun game. And it's getting more and more expensive. I'm really glad that we were able to strike a deal that, that we were both happy with. Um, I also got a Game Gear, which doesn't work. Uh, another co-worker ended up giving me that because it didn't work. We actually made a, made a monetary decision on where to, like, you know, how much that was going to be. But since it didn't work, she just gave it to me. So I got to doctor that up and make that a project. And it be a fun project, though. It will be. Uh, I'm very excited to see if I can get it to work because it's it was just it was fate. It had to have been because we had just said not even a month prior, you know, I you know we, we were standing at our local disc replay going, I want to get into Game Gear collecting because they just had such a great selection there that at that time there was just mm-hmm. everything you would want. But I mean, like, okay, so it's basically in in a colorized eight bit portable system. It's it's a master system on the go, and there's games that came out on the Game Gear that are just freaking awesome that had other versions of course it went to genesis went to super nintendo but i mean like i want to say like even games like uh, side score games like the streets of rage are on there and stuff like that yeah i don't remember exactly maybe primal fury or primal on there oh um the primal fury the fighting game uh Where what's that the... game called what's that game called primal fear it's primal fury primal fury yeah is, is, is that what that's called yeah um Wow, yeah, I can't remember that name. I I know it's like Primal something. Primal, Primal Rage. Primal Rage. Not Primal Fury, it's Primal Rage. Primal Rage. It may yep. not be, but they've. I know that they had a lot of fighting games like that. Uh, but, you know, I do remember the Streets of Rage being on there. The side-scroller uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie, um, has that on there. And, I mean, of course, Sonic 1 and 2. And I mean, yeah, okay, they're... They're dumbed down versions, but it'd still be cool to have. Still be cool to collect for. And is there any exclusives to the game gear? Like only you can only find on Game Gear. Do you remember, buddy? I don't know. Um, I don't know much about game about Game Gear collecting. I I almost said GameCube. <laughs> I don't know much about Game Gear collecting. Which isn't very good in our area, anyways. But <laughs> no, no, uh, cube collecting is becoming very, very difficult. Uh, it, it's either. You don't see the games, or they're freaking expensive for the ones you really want. And for Game Gear, the cool thing is that a lot of the rarer games for that aren't too expensive. There's a couple. There's like a handful that are like getting over 50, you know, 80, 100. 
level, but mostly they're around 20 bucks. It's right. kind of like the original Xbox. It's like, you have no idea how hard it was for me to not pick up the guy game for the Xbox. I don't want that fucking trash. That, but. But, it, <laughs> but. You know, it's already 20 bucks. Yeah. What's it going to be in another 15 years when that game is harder to find? And it's, uh, it's one of the scarcer games, is it not? Yeah, it is. Because it was only in the market for like three months. Mm-hmm. And so, like, if people, you know, you you find the right buyer in 10, 15 years is trying to complete a collection, you know, you that's good trade bait. And, man, and it's gone now. Somebody finally bought it. But it, it was in our store for, like, a couple months. Yes, it was. You know, and, and I just, every time I saw it, I was like, no, no. And every time we walked by it, we both stopped and looked at it, and you're like, you know, that's just the good pick. Ah, no, I don't need it. And a lot of the times you'd find this stuff, like Crystal Chronicles, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Tales of Symphonia. Tales of Symphonia. Yeah. I mean, those stuff are games I, you gotta have, in yeah. my opinion. The you know the stuff that I really wanted, you know, I, I'm glad. I'm glad I always found that because uh, if I didn't find anything I ever wanted, I probably would have came to back to that and bought it. And maybe it would have been awesome in like ten years, fifteen years, but to sit here and test that game out, it would have made me feel dirty and immature. Yes. Uh, <laughs> like okay, so we. Uh, off topic here, but so we both have HBO now. Yep. You know to watch uh, Game of Thrones when that came out. Um, so we've been watching some movies uh, on there, and they have a section called Late Night, and it's not late night talk shows; it's softcore porn. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. I haven't looked at it. I mean, go I, look, man, and I tell I you might. what. No, a lot, but you don't. You don't have to go watch it, but just scroll down to your menu and say late night, and go and check out, see what titles they have. It's like it's the HBO stuff. It's real sex, and then you have, uh, you actually have like vixens in space or something. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And I, I saw that, and I'm just like, I could just imagine like a 13 year old me would have been going, ooh, ooh, I'm gonna have yeah. to steal this, bring it to the bedroom later. But you know, 29 year old me's going, oh, God. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, we're going to start getting into the news. I do have some news, and uh, Mike doesn't know what news it is. Top story, Pokemon Go is out. I do know this, because uh, I did we, download it about uh, yeah. a couple hours ago. Yeah, uh, I tested this game out today. And uh, you know what? It's it's interesting. I do feel like some kids are probably going to get end up like rain over. Uh, yeah. because I was walking through a fucking parking lot and people were trying to pull... There's a gas station right down the road and people really don't follow the rules of a parking lot at this place. So uh, I was walking and some guy would just cut right in front of me almost hit me. While you were looking at your phone trying, yeah, trying to find... I was uh, <laughs> I was right near a Weedle, and he, damn it. And, a Weedle, yeah. Uh, so basically how this game works is uh, it is a mobile game that you, that you download to your uh, mobile phone, uh, iOS, Android. And you walk, you walk around in the real world, and you can find Pokemon, and you can catch them, and you can trade them with people. And they have certain spots that are Poke spots where you visit there, and you can get some more items. I I visited the one down the street, and I got four Pokeballs out of it. And so, is it just a visiting? It automatically gives you what is there, or uh, yeah, and I think it might be random. Be- I think it's, if we, can you go back in like you know a couple hours and maybe get something yes different? yes well because okay. uh, after I did it it said hey you know not not like nothing here try again later so right I, I do assume that you can go back and get some more stuff there are microtransactions of course for you to be able to get you know whatever items you want and here, there and that and so so you know our friend Jay will be happy if he wants to play it <laughs> yes yes Mr. Uh, microtransaction but himself. I mean it I think I have four I think I I got my starter when you first create your guy there's a starter and within walking distance of you. I had to go outside into into my neighbor's yard and catch Charmander. <laughs> I, and, I picked up Squirtle right here in the... Right here in my game room. Yeah, right yeah. in the game room. And I caught a Weedle. There's a second Weedle. I, I caught another Weedle. It was right here in the game room. I was just messing around. And it was, bloop. And in fact, right when we were talking, there was an Eevee that showed up and I almost ran out to get him. I remember. Urgh. I wanted an Eevee. I want to get my Jolty on. Anyway, you know what? I will say it's a really cool idea. Um, we'll see how much, you know... How much longevity it has, I don't know, uh, but I, I will say, you know, it's it's really freaking fun to mess around with. 
And it encourages you to get out and walk around and go new places. But like you said, you're going to see kids that are, well, that are already plastered to their phone anyways, but when, walking around, looking through the camera, looking for... Yeah. You did Pokemon. see you did see the first thing it tells you, right? Uh, maybe. It says, uh, please be aware of your surroundings. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, please be aware of your surroundings. So well, that they covered picture, their butts. That one picture that you showed me was who was it that was standing in the middle of the roof, the street that you had? Uh, Venonat. Yeah. I I caught a Venonat and he was. I walked across the the like the street, pretty much. I just kind of walked a couple blocks, You're right? And walked down to the gas station, you know, just to test it out, see what it was. Pretty like. much, that's what it was, and that's why when you called me and said, and I said, yeah, I already I already walked to the gas station. You're like, you walked. Why would you walk? We have cars. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and uh, I said, I'll Especially tell you later. when it's 80 some degrees outside, you, you know? You know what? It is pretty hot, but I tell you what, when you're just, when, when uh, the, the, you know, the sun wasn't beaming down on me, I really, and sitting here right now, I'm not that hot. Yeah, it's not bad right now. Because I get used to it. Um, you know, when we're doing our, our YouTube video, our, our pickup video, that was hot. Yeah, we were sweating. And so, even so much that the uh, fan kind of got left on. Yeah, that was my fault. Uh, but that's fine. Uh, so, you know, I mean, we did a whole metal cast where we did first half, and then we, Turn the crank the air up back here, came back down, and we forgot to turn the air conditioner off. So there's a constant sort of no. yeah. But it, <laughs> but I tell you what, man, uh, the first half of that metal cast was like it actually did you know it get did get a little heated. You know there was some confrontation, uh, some arguments, and then we come back and we were all chill, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> literally. Right. Like it was cool back here. We all just sort of sat back and we had we, you know, we had a good time. Definitely want to do that again, but. Uh, Going back on course with the news, Red Dead Redemption has coming t- is coming to backwards compatibility tomorrow. As we record this, wow, it's coming fast. out. It's coming out on Friday on uh, on Ju- uh, July eighth, and sales, as reported by Amazon and some others, uh, some other guys, sales have jumped up six thousand percent after this announcement. On the Xbox One, or it, to the Xbox three hundred and sixty version. Oh wow! I believe it. I believe that's a great. I mean, I'm not too partial to it, but I know that a lot of people love it. Red Dead, honestly, it is one of the best games on the prior generation because it was it just sort of came out of left field. We already had Red Dead Revolver. It's a very iffy game. It's okay. Then this game comes out. And it's like, what if we take that concept and take our open world Grand Theft Auto stuff and put it in here? And you have an open world Old West game. It's it, fun. I, love, oh, I dude. liked it. But I just I didn't get into it to where I played through the whole thing. Oh, I mean, oh, see, the, and that Red Dead Redemption has one of the best video game endings I've ever seen. I have seen the ending. Uh, it's a great freaking ending, and it's a great journey. It, it, it is a really good game, and uh, I can't wait for another one. Uh, there is one coming. They've they haven't announced it, but they pretty much said uh, that they are working on one. What was it? He said he he did the um, RDR two, mm-hmm. but oh, he said it's it in like different we're working well, on there was somebody who was working for rockstar or something like that pretty much let it slip but even key people who can't say anything about it right um pretty much they've said that look grand theft auto red dead uh and a few others these are our staple franchises right. oh, max Payne was another one he goes they're staple franchises we're just because we don't have one coming out every five every year every two years every five years doesn't mean that we're done with it you know, they like to take their time. Well, they like to give us quality product. Yeah. We well, I mean, really do. You know, Grand Theft Auto 4 came out in 08, and Grand Theft Auto 5 came out in 13. Yeah. You know, that's Fantastic. A, that's a lot of time. Oh, yeah. And it's By, huge, huge game. The, the quality jump from 4 to 5 was just... Unbelievable. Uh, yes. Um, Even but, with the uh, the HD upgrade. Yes. It looks it, phenomenal. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm so happy that I bought that on PS4. I, I plan on getting it when I find it at a reasonable price. I actually have yet to see it. In our local dis- in our local stores mm-hmm. to be able to purchase it because I have been actively looking for it. I just can't find you it. You know what? I I was looking for The Witcher. Three. Witcher three. Uh, it is out there. I want right it for now. the Xbox One. I didn't look. Uh, now, this isn't like. I don't think I have like a news story about this, but I they did reveal. I got leaked. Saying that they're going to release a game of the year edition with all the free DLC they've already released and then the Ooh. paid stuff, so I'm glad I haven't jumped on it yet. I've heard it's a great freaking game. It, it's a basically what I've heard from people 
and I might have heard this from other podcasts. I can't remember, but basically dogging on Bethesda, or for because you know how glitchy Bethesda games are. Yeah, yeah. And basically, CD Projekt Red's The Witcher open world is just as big and has no problems. <laughs> and well, and I mean, so basically, they're saying like Bethesda, you know, the days of us excusing you for you know having glitches and having problems because of the world's so big. It's running out when other people are doing it just as big with no problems. Well, how long is it? How long have they been working on The Witcher Three? They worked on that for a long, for you know, for a good while. Plus, but you also have to look at the amount of people working on that game versus Bethesda. Usually, keeps it fairly tight knit. Well, mean, they're not massive. Bethesda is a they they Bethesda has way more money. Let's put it that way. Well, yeah, yeah. They have more money uh, uh, to put in there, and I think a bigger problem with Bethesda uh, is that the last set of games have been made on the kind of like the similar engine so yeah i like the engine though personally i do like the engine okay and i'm not on i'm not i'm not trying to like say this one's better than that one's better i'm just saying it, it it is quite the feat to have a series that really did not come into prominence as far as like grabbing mainstream attention until the third entry witcher 3 right and then for them to go this is quality and then look at Bethesda and go, you guys are bigger than this, and they're they're smaller than you, and they're beating you out. It's like, now it's time to step it up. What, and then, what game specifically are you talking about where they stepped it up? Are you talking about Skyrim? Uh, no, like, as the as the Bethesda games as a whole, they run, uh, they, they run at a poorer quality with, you know, with their open world than The Witcher did. And basically what they're saying is, the Witcher's a newer game, though. Like, a, but the Fallout Three. Four suffers from the same problems. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't hear. Fallout Four came out after Witcher Three. They came out in the same year, and it, Fallout Four is great. I loved it. It was great. It is now almost to the point where I will buy it at this replay. Oh, hey, cool. It's getting there. It's it, getting there. It was a great freaking game. It has a couple issues, sure. I mean, but it's a Bethesda game, and I see that like I'm giving it a pass. But, um, uh, you know, it was great. And I haven't played Witcher, but with you know, with the game of the year, I definitely want to. And I basically it came out for both PS4, Xbox One, and I'm trying to find homes for certain games because I know that that the visual quality is not gonna give me any difference anymore. Right. Pretty much, it's like I was like, oh, the frame rate dips too much on the Xbox. Mm, not anymore, really. They sort of got that figured out. Yeah, they uh, uh, give the Xbox. early on. Yeah, I mean, it was a big deal. And then okay, uh, only 720p. That's gone now. Uh, for most games, yeah. Uh, what's next in the news? Uh, oh, this is sort of gaming related. If you have an Xbox 360 or Xbox One, or I think it's maybe on the Microsoft Store on the on the uh, PC as well, you can grab the entire first season of Dragon Ball Z in HD for free. Huh. Digitally. Uh, all 39 episodes. Eh, I kind of went in a hard case, but that is still really neat. I mean, it's just, uh, peop- uh, from the article uh, on IGN, it's like, they don't know why, but sure. <laughs> I just say this, damn you, Microsoft, you're uh, starting to do things that I want you to do. You, well, I mean, you Microsoft me Oh, Microsoft is doing a lot of a lot of cool stuff. I mean, I know you, were, you weren't down with the Play Anywhere type deal, but I think it's really neat that they are trying to... Uh, trying to put their foot in a couple different things to so to, to make the Xbox brand well, you know, footed over here while the PlayStation is over here. They're they're trying to make themselves different, right? While not, while I'm, while the consoles themselves are are so similar. I'm, I'm not. I'm definitely not knocking the, the the idea and what it is. I I actually personally like it, but I also believe that it has deferred me from getting an Xbox One now because I get Forza. Like I've we'll told see. you before, Forza would be the one that brings me in. If they get a bunch of games, I'll be like, all right, I got to get Forza. And now I don't have to because it's going to be on Windows. That was my only argument. Is you, I was almost at the point where it's like, okay, I kind of have to pick one up. Now it's like, well, I'm not picking one up. Well, see, you don't have to, but then you can also do it for when you know. And I said this in the last episode: when you want to relax and not be in the computer room, when you want to be downstairs, right. you know, on, on 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 your couch that swallows you with your control in your That's hand. A very good couch. You know, <laughs> I mean, there's just there there's pluses and negatives to it. Um, and see, the thing is, is that I, I heard that it's not so much that. It's the people are dogging Xbox for them announcing the Scorpio a year and a half in advance. And then saying, we have the Slim, by the way, this thing. And I I do see 
why people were like, well, why would you, why, why, why would we buy the Slim if you're just going to release a better console? I do see the reasoning in that a little bit because the Scorpio is going to be more expensive. It will, yes. And if you don't have a 4K television and have no plans on buying one anytime soon, it's not for you. No. That is for those people for who either have a 4K or are going to get a 4K. Yeah, like I just purchased a 4K here recently. Right. So. So you know, so the Scorpio might be something that you look at. You're right. If you ever want to get an Xbox One, that would be the one to get. Also, for me, with uh, getting the X, the Scorpio, I plan on picking up a VR of some kind, mm-hmm. and I would personally, I'd like to have it on the PC because I can kind of tweak the, I can kind of tweak it to my advantage and get it to where I, how I want it. What's and, cool with that though is that you can get the Oculus. That's what I'm and saying. And you can use it on the Xbox One if if that's what they're doing, and then also have a setup for your PC. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. That's that's why, I've, you know, I might still pick up the Oculus. I'm probably going to pick up the Oculus Rift. I, I, I don't know. I have. There are rumors that they're going to have a bundle with the Scorpius and the Oculus Rift. That's going to be pricey. It probably will be. Um, moving on to the news, FF7 got released on Android. <laughs> <laughs> um, take over four gigabytes of space. It and it is, uh, it's not selling for sixteen dollars. You'll need two gigabytes of RAM or memory to run it. Do they up the res or something? Uh, it's. I'm pretty sure it is like the PC port. Because that is a uh, two, two gigabyte game. If I. I believe it is. I do believe it. it, That is like the Steam version that came out that has a little bit smoother textures and like some some better sounding. Has to because the original on the actual disc. You know, I mean, it's cool. It's mobile. Uh, I mean, I I, I for one, I would much rather you know buy the PS One Classic, which I I yeah. I'm not I'm not rocking the uh, the FF Seven Soldier shirt or nothing. Yeah, but uh, you know, I can get it on my on my Vita or my PSP and have actual buttons. That's just it, man. We're entering a phase of gaming where it's more so touchscreen buttons than in actual buttons. And I hate that. I'm a console man all through and through. I am too. Well, but I mean, not really console man through and through, but I like the buttons. I, I like to be able to. It feel makes me wonder how much. Like I've heard some stuff about the NX. Is uh, it going to be touch screen? That might be all touch screen, and it's oh, like, I man, I don't know. I but really hope not. You know what? Uh, we'll, we'll just have well, to look at the see. Steam controller. Yeah, uh, with like the touch pad. The touch yeah. pad for a, uh, uh, yeah. Like to simulate mouse? And yeah. Keyboard and mouse? Thing. Well, no, I think it was a, uh, the joystick. The left stick is, is completely smooth. It isn't a, is a stick, it's actually a pad. Well, and you move it around. Well, the Steam controller had. It had two pads up here that was right. to simulate keyboard and mouse movement. Right. Then it had a stick down here, and it had uh, face buttons here. It it was sort of a hybrid type thing, and unfortunately, uh, from what I understand, the the Steam machines are dead. Well, for seven hundred dollars. <laughs> they. I tell you what, it was a cool idea, but I, I don't. I don't really think it caught on. Uh, moving on to the news: plus versus gold. Which ones? You know, what's going coming out this month? Which one's a better deal? Uh, PS Plus for July, Saints Row 4, Get Out of Hell, that's the expansion for that. That's for, uh, then we have Fury, F-U-R-I, never heard of it. Call of Juarez, Round of Blood, and uh, now, please note that, uh, Get Out of Hell is probably for PS4, uh, then Fury is probably for PS4, then you have Call of Juarez and Fat Princess, those are probably for PS3, then the last two, Prince of Persia Revelation, and I cannot pronounce that, or, uh, or Shika. Shika? That's or probably for Vita. Bloodlines. What they do is they like, they like to do two games for each system. Yep. Sometimes there's a cross. Like Fat Princess might actually go over to the uh, to the Vita, but I don't know for sure. Uh, games with Gold, Banner Saga 2, Tumblestone, Rainbow Clancy, Rainbow Clancy, Tom Clancy's wow, Rainbow really? Six, Vegas 2, and Tron Evolution. Those are your for games over there. Uh, total retail value is better on the PS Plus, but um, as far as like actual quality games... Uh, Xbox might have it with Banner Saga and uh, and and Vegas too. I don't know, but that's just that. N- going on, uh, Resident Evil Seven demo. It's been downloaded over two million times. It's fun. It has set some records and uh, it's got people excited. It. I mean, I, I'm excited about it. it. Definitely, I feel like it is the next step. Now, how they're gonna integrate the zombie like. You know, mm-hmm. Are we going to have a cannibalist? I, I feel like it's going to be a cannibalist. Well, from what I understand, the demo has nothing to do with the main game other than getting you introduced into the new world. Like, whatever's going on here, like, uh, they've re- uh, 
the the interviews that I've read said that they're going to reduce massively re- reduce the amount of enemy encounters that you have. Right, but make the make them count. May make them count more. And apparently, also, they were working on this and decided to make this first person before PT came out, the old PT demo, the Silent right. Hills. So when that came out, they went, "Oh, they're doing first person too." So this was something that. Hmm. Like both studios had decided to go to to tr- to try it and get more of an immersion horror feel. The Resident Evil Seven. The reason why they went this way is because of the severe backlash to six, five and six. Uh, five, five had started it and six went. What is going on here? Yeah, like what are you, you doing with this? You guys franchise? are going too far over here, and so they decided like pretty much the mindset. What can we do to capture the horror feel like we did back in the nineties? But today, what's going on today? I, like I've been preaching on um, every podcast that we brought this up. The door. I mm-hmm. felt like when I opened the door and you could slowly open it up, I actually stopped when I was playing it. And I was like, uh-oh, they're doing it. Like, they're going to make it to where when you open that door, something might happen. Mm-hmm. Like, where they might reach through and grab you and jerk you into the room and you're, you've are you got to get away. Like, that would, to me, that would petrify me in a game because you don't know what's there. That gives that sense of, like, in Resident mm-hmm. Evil, the original, you have that door, that what's loading screen, side? what's on the other side. Now you have that feel of a new air, and it's three-dimensional world where they can just reach over and they pull you into the room. You, It's not a fact of it's a jump scare. It's a, like you're legitimately scared. And that's what I am looking, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, I really well, do. especially since they've made it, you know, fully playable with PSVR capabilities. Oh yeah. But that came later. They were actually designing the game to be a first-person game before the VR stuff even came in. They were just made a challenge: can we make this work for our game? And they could. Right. So, um, the last bit of news I have is about Gran Turismo. Gran, Gran Turismo creator says <laughs> PS3 was a nightmare <laughs> to develop for. Um, basically, yeah. noted that the conditions. For GT6, which was released after the arrival of PS4, sold considerably fewer copies than GT5. Uh, We were always have the pressure to sell good numbers. Um, You know, at the same time, the conditions of GT6 were really against us, mainly because the PS3 hardware was very difficult to develop for, so it took time, caused a lot of stress, and also, you know, like the PS4 had just come out, so all the hype was about the new system. They're like, oh, by the way, this old game came out. Right. Um, basically, he says, uh, compared to the PS4, a piece of hardware that was really that really has the ability to answer our uh, our expectations. I said this over and over again, but Gran Turismo Sport it really has the level of innovation you haven't seen since Gran Turismo One. Thank God. We're having a lot of fun <laughs> developing it, and we're discovering a lot of things that we can do. Uh, so hey, you know, awesome. Like, I, like I think we discussed before, it, this series really fell off after four. It just the five. I feel like the PS3 was even diff- was like was just too difficult for them to work. I mean, this has been something that has it's not it's not any secret. A lot of some teams figured it out before others. And the third party guys, that's why the PS3 stuff, the third party stuff, was so weak compared to the 360 right. stuff in the beginning because they they did not want to spend the time and resources to make this version. Right. You know when they have this version. So. But I, I feel like Sony has answered that with the PS4. Yes. They've pretty much put their foot down and said, all right, we've made the mistake. We know we've made the mistake. Here is our answer. Yeah. It was that cell processor, man. That just it, that hurt a lot of people. Yeah. So that's the news that I selected to talk about. So have you been thinking? I've been thinking. Do you have an answer? I have an answer. All right. So what we decided to do for this episode, guys, we want to start doing top tens. Um, where we sort of decide, you know, what, what, like, what, what are the top ten... NES games to play. Now, those, I guarantee you some of these lists are going to be stuff that has done before. But really, I'm trying to look more so with games I have. More so than, like, games that I don't have. Like, there's going to be some, you know, that I don't have. Like, where, like what are, the, like, the top ten games to play? And to start this off, I just kind of wanted to do top ten games of all time for whatever system. Now, people who listen to Journey to Comics might know that me and Nate have sort of done this with comics and video games where he did top five comics I did top five games we actually shot a YouTube video for that and it was never uploaded fail yeah well it it required a lot of editing and laziness ensued so um oh I just made noise easy 
And if anybody can hear a fan or anything like that, that's, that's because we're sitting in the back room. And it's hot. And, yeah, it's a little, it's a little warm, but it, we had to turn the window fan off because, man, it was just too warm. Uh, or no, it was too, too loud. loud. It was <laughs> too loud. too warm for the fan, yeah, okay. It's too warm for the fan. Anyway, so do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Well, I figured that we'll start from 10 and work our way up well, individually. we will do 10-10. You know, I'll yep. do 10, you'll do 10. That sounds like a plan to me. All right, so my 10. Let's start with your 10 because mine... <laughs> Mine is not really set in stone because mine always it fluctuates you know my mood, how I feel. My about top what five I is play. set. Okay, after that, it was difficult. It was very difficult because I'm trying to make. Don't want one series or two or something like that to dominate my top ten. You know, it's like if I could easily say a lot of the Final Fantasy is just going to be in there. Yes. So I'm trying to go out and I'm like, oh, this one, oh, this one, oh, this I'm one. I'm definitely picking my my top games for. it. And I I have my list, but like I said, it all sometimes your mood changes like my list. So my number ten is Uncharted Four. Really, um, a newer game. Uh, well, see what I did it is I tried to go through each system. One of my absolute favorite games for this system, with all the game all the systems I have, Uncharted Four was on there for PS4. Huh? It has to be. I mean, it's one of the top four top PS4 games I have. And honestly, I think there were only like three entries on the PS4 that I put into that category. And one of them didn't make the list. Um, So when I was making my list, I think I had about 23, 24 games. So then I had to start selecting. Condensing. And then easily Uncharted 2 could be up here. But I'm like trying to think and I'm like, and my gut reaction says 4 is better. Right. But as I said in our pickup video... Maybe maybe four is better for me because I played the whole series, and I have all the character development from one through three. Now I'm at four. These characters are here now. They mentioned the past. It's still a great game in itself. I really love the experience. I played through it twice. I played through it for the first one. It was amazing. The second one was even better. Um, so yeah, it, it it comes in at number ten. Mine is an indie game. Go for and it. I bet you can guess it. Oh yeah, probably. Don't starve. Don't starve. That game. It is. It's very simple, mm-hmm. but it is a lot of fun because it's it's a survival. There is no story. There is well, there kind of is, but it is. Hey, survive, go, mm-hmm. and that's what you do. And I enjoy it greatly. In that you know that's on uh, Vita. Actually, current um, here recently picked it up and got it on my Vita. Came out on PS4 first, yep. right? PS4 Vita. I don't know. It, it might be on. I, it was on Steam. It was on Steam. It on Steam? And you can have. Um, don't starve. Uh, play together. Hmm, that's cool. So, so you, like, if so you can do like a cross thing. Yeah, like me and you can play together. I think that's also over to the Vita. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it is. I or they are at least working on it for a don't play together. Cool, cool. So uh, that would be mine. Number nine. Now, okay. When you're taking twenty-five games, however many I had twenty-three, twenty-four. And you're making a list. Okay, so as I said, number one through five almost hasn't changed. If, even if it, I mean, yeah, my top five ha- have not changed for quite a few years. But trying to put games into an order from six to ten, hard. Very hard. Yeah. Number nine for me is Mass Effect. That low? I'm actually, like, well, is it the series or are you going off the, the No, just the first Mass Effect. Okay. Just the original Mass Effect. And, okay, so that was on my list for the Xbox 360. And I'm just, like, you know, trying to figure this out. And I'm, like, I'm like thinking, does it make top ten? Does it make top ten? I'm like, it almost has to because of how much I got into that game. That game alone bought me an Xbox 360. I, I remember you explaining to me the... I didn't own one. I saw the game uh, on YouTube... I was watching Kotar videos, and just so happened, hey, same guys that made Kotar, Bioware, made this game. Check it out. And it was, all I saw was the dialogue, and went, oh my god. <laughs> and I'm so, ah, oh, i got to check this game out. Circuit, C- Circuit City just happened to be going out of business <laughs> in our <laughs> local town, and um, I swing, I saw, me, and, me and Rob swung in, and they had it on clearance it was already it came this was an exactly one year after the game had come out so it came out in 07 this is 08 
like November of 08. And I swung in there. It was $30 plus 15% off of that. Hmm. So I'm like, there it is. got it. You know, they had one copy. Picked it up, bought it, played through it, loved it. Loved it. The gameplay, um, very stiff. <laughs> it's definitely, they didn't... Stiff now, but then... No, well, it, no, it was stiff then because I'd yeah. already played Gears of War. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, uh, it definitely has that same third-person shooter aspect, but it is so freaking stiff. You could definitely tell that this game was designed to be a PC RPG before it was a shooter. Hmm. Now, they fixed that as the series went on, and it became much more of a shooter than an RPG, which is honestly where it, like, like where the Mass Effect series should be. Because, I, mean, I mean, the game played flawlessly for multiplayer. It was just, it was set. It was fixed. I mean, it works. If you were to take that original gameplay style and try to, try to do a multiplayer with that, that would be horrendous. But, um, yeah, Mass Effect 1 is number 9 for me. Huh. Wow. I, well, I guess it's one, but I'm assuming that uh, three is up there, right? No. <laughs> My nine is a PC game, Kerbal Space Program. Kerbal, yeah, that that's a newer one, right? It's a newer one. I uh, my cousin got me hooked on that. Just playing it, the fundamentals of it, like just the physics of it, it, it was very fun. It, it just it, the preparing for the mission and stuff. I had mm-hmm. a lot of fun with that game, and. Every once in a while I go back to it. Now I'm at the part where it takes a long time to launch a vehicle. Like you have to really take your time and it's very small parts so you have to actually write down and figure out these very elaborate spaceships to launch out to what would be Mars or what would be Jupiter. Mm -hmm. And that's a long haul. And so you have to make sure all your ducks in a row. But it is a very fun game. PC game. I have a few PC games on mine. Because I am a PC at I, heart. I tried to get into PC gaming a couple of years ago, and it, 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 it didn't work. It did not work. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, I, there's a reason why I don't... Number one, okay, I don't want to mess with the whole tinkering crap. I just want to play my damn game. Number two, I cannot sit at a computer that long. My sciatic will start bugging me, and I'm going to have to get up and I have to walk away. I feel like it's more comfortable for me. Oh, no, chair. no, no, man. My hip will kill me if I sit like when I do when I edit YouTube videos and it takes me a long time my god like I had to go take pain meds wow uh, yeah it, uh, I, I'm not playing a game that long hell no you know I mean <laughs> it, I cause I I actually tried to play uh, they just released a KOTAR 2 uh, onto Steam in HD with uh, mods where you can get the the extended uh, stuff that, that, right, that got right. t- uh, you know taken out of it that that modders have actually put back into the game. And so you have like a whole new planet to go to. Cool. You know, you can actually hook it up with your 360 controller and you play it. You like the tweaking. Get no, right. no. My PC ran it just fine. Really? It, like, it, like it was sitting there. Huh. It was sitting there that long that I couldn't do it. Wow. So my number uh, eight. Yes. Double check. Resident Evil 2. Huh. Resident Evil 2. I freaking love... The old school Resident Evil series. That is a good game. Um, uh, I have more copies of one than I do two. I have multiple copies well, of there one. there are mo- multiple platforms that Resident Evil... Well, okay, because you had a remake, okay? But I have three copies of Resident Evil on the PS1. Big box. I have the original big box. I have the director's cut, and then I have the director's cut greatest hits. Yep. Yep, don't judge. And then I have the remake on the GameCube, and I have the remake on the PS3. <laughs> I could get it also on the Wii. I was gonna say it's on the Wii. It's on the Wii, but I don't. I don't need to own it. Um, but Resident Evil Two, uh, there are only three. Okay, I have two versions of two. I have the original and then the Dual Shock for PS2. There was a version for the Dreamcast that came out. There's a version for the N64 that came out. There's a version on the GameCube that came out. Damn. I used to own the GameCube one, and I bought that on eBay for forty dollars. Um, and it got lost in the mail. Oh, that would just infuriate me. So, uh, I'm like, hey, I never got my game. And but because I bought the insurance, they sent me another one first class, and it was there like within... I emailed them like early on in the day, uh, and then it was there like the next day because they sent it out first class overnight. Right. It, and then... 
because they were like, okay, you get it, we, you know, we'll take it, you know, and we'll take the loss. Because they asked, like, do you want your money back or do you want, you know, we have another copy if you, if you want that. I'm like, I sure. Want copy. I want the game, man. Yeah, I didn't See, it. and and that's the thing for me. <laughs> what like, like I I took a game back into that one store that we don't like, and I said, hey, this doesn't work, and she was hesitant to give me back my money, and she goes, I got another copy. You want to switch it? I'm like, yes. I I. I don't want my money back. I I want the game. I bought the game. Yeah. Um, but Resident Evil Two, I still remember. That was the first game I ever rented on P on PlayStation. Really? Yes. Um, it it was only on my demo disc. It was only a video, and uh, so I, I was like, "What is this?" You know, I've never seen anything like it. You know, uh, first owning PlayStation. Uh, so I missed the original Resident Evil uh, by the time I got my PlayStation. I think I got my PlayStation in the fall of '98. So this had just come out. Huh. Uh, so I went to the, you know, my Hollywood video and rented it and scared the crap out of me, especially the liquor. Yes. The liquor scared the shit out of me. Um, I can't wait. They, they did announce that they're remaking that. Yes, they did. And I, I am, I cannot wait. Oh, I can't either. Ooh. Uh, well, what was cool. Okay. So they released some crappy Umbrella Corpse game, right? I, yeah, I had that. No, no, not the, not the one that came out a few years ago. The one that just came out like a few weeks ago. Oh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I didn't have that one. Uh, that one was called Umbrella... Umbrella Chronicles? Or Umbrella... You're talking about the shooter? No. That was Operation Raccoon City, right? The one that I had was the... The third person shooter? The one that I had was like uh, the House of Dead shooter. It mm. was... Um, okay, no. It, yeah, it's this the, new one's not like Wii. that. This, this one's more of a shooter. Uh, you know, They, they, they recreated um, the police station. Uh, in this a level in this game and it looks fantastic that has it has damage on the roof and it's raining coming in and oh wow yeah they they definitely went all out for it the, I, I've heard that game absolutely sucks we'll, we'll have to look into that oh you're talking about Operation uh, Raccoon City nope nope I'm talking about Umbrella Corpse uh, I have to I yeah have to. It's, it's a newer one that, that just came out and I heard it sucks but Resident Evil 2 is definitely one it's like if I if I had to pick one that is it Resident Evil 2 is... I can see that. Uh, I mean, because as much as I love the goofiness and the wackiness of the original, okay, that, that's why I own that. That one holds a special place in my heart. And the horrible voice acting. <laughs> well, see, because uh, Resident Evil 2 was the first game I ever rented. I wanted it for Christmas. like Because I rented it in, like... I mean, I've got my PlayStation at the, at the end of October, so I rented this in November. You know? And, like, I want it for Christmas! And uh, I didn't get it for Christmas. I had, I had $20 to spend... Uh, for Christmas money, go to the store and they have Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil Director's Cut. You know, and this one's, you know, Director's Cut was 20 bucks. Resident Evil 2 was 40 bucks. Because I don't know if you remember, but back in the day, brand new PS1 games were $40. Yes. Um, I miss those days. I asked my dad, hey, can I get 20 bucks and I, and I can combine it and get Resident Evil 2? He goes, nope, you can get that one. I'm like, <clears throat> so yeah. I did and I was sort of sad, but. It was so awesome because I got to enjoy the original game, and it was so bad, but so good. It's good. It is. Um, mine is Super Mario 3. That is a fantastic game. Oh, yeah. It just... It had it all. At that time, I played the crap out of that game. Still can't beat every level. <laughs> I, can't, I can't beat every level. The but at least level. you know where the whistles are. I know where all the whistles are, and I can get there. But, yes, that game was amazing. Oh, so, by far. I mean, what can you say about Mario 3 that hasn't already been said? You can't. Um, it's, it's phenomenal. So I'll, I'll just go on to my next game, uh, number seven, The Last of Us. I knew that was there. Um, wow. I mean... That's where... This game isn't... Okay, The Last of Us isn't so much a game as it is an experience. It definitely isn't, yes. Okay. It is a game, but it is something that you have to experience. It, it, it is a very heavily story and character driven game, but it's but it's a slow burn. Yes. It's a very slow burn with the characters. And there's a lot of little interactivity between the characters. Where they're and, walking around and yes. chitter chattering with each other and you pick up specific items and they actually talk about mm -hmm. those specific items. It's uh, yes. and then of course you have the survival horror aspect where you have crap, I got three bullets in this gun, two in this one and four shotgun shells, and I gotta get through this area, you know, make sure I don't use it all. Yeah, you gotta do the silent kills. So, there's the, there's a the stealth, there's a the survival horror aspect. It, 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 
it takes so many different genres and blends them into one mess and then paints it and then it's just a beautiful story driven game it is it is um i'll never forget uh now it's it, it's been 3 years ago i uh, i just recently uh, i don't do social media stuff okay but i got time hop on my phone and you plug it into your social media stuff and every day it'll show you stuff that you posted a year ago two years ago three years ago four right, years right. ago five years ago and just the other day i said kicking off my vacation with the last of us cuz that's I remember that i played it 3 years ago over shutdown and i remember you coming back in saying you have to play this game mm-hmm. there is no i i played it over the weekend uh, my my first weekend uh, that first weekend I, I i sat there and played it and <sighs> can't get enough of that I, I love that game i bought it uh, i actually don't have my ps3 cop anymore i sold it to uh, to a like a, to a coworker of ours and then oh uh, yeah yeah, and then I have the uh, I, I have the PS4 version now. I yeah, I currently have that. Um, team, so. I mean, as much as for my collection, I mean, uh, do I would I want to have it? Yeah, but I mean, this, the, this this guy was asking about it. He was wanting his, you know, he's thinking about getting it. I'm like, I got it, dude. I'll just flat rate. Here you go. And, I'm like it's because he he bought a copy off of eBay. It didn't work. He had to send it back. He told me how much he spent for it. And I'm like, dude. Like I don't even care. Like I, I have it on PS4 now. Right. And like here you go. He goes, well, don't you want it for your collection? I'm like yeah, but I mean, oh well. I don't need it. I mean, yeah. It, it, to tell you the truth, in 20 years, I'm like, well, I wish I still had that. But <laughs> at the same token, it saves me space for the time being. Right. You know, I can always pick up that game later when those games, are, when the PS3 games are down to like a dollar a piece. You know. So. Yes. Oh my seven, my seven, my seven. I. You should have wrote these down, man. I should have wrote these down. Well, I kind of forgot. I'm not going to lie to the, <laughs> to the listeners here. I, I literally forgot. I've been having so much stuff going on. I just, I literally spaced it until I walked in the door and you said, you still got your list, right? And I was like, um, what list? <laughs> the list that you're supposed to have. For the oh. next episode. Yes, no, I do not. But I will say, I, a lot of mine are PlayStation games, but Gran Turismo 2. Hell yeah, man. That was one of my favorite games. I had it for... That was one of the uh, the games I actually bought brand new for the, the PlayStation. And I, I literally had every vehicle. I beat every thing that you could do over two or three times over. Like I would do the two-hour race and... I would max out the time way before, or the the laps that you could possibly do. I remember I had a friend, oh, I love that game. who like he just had one memory card just for Gran Turismo. Yes, stuff. that that was me. Uh, I was the exact same way. Uh, yeah, uh, Gran Turismo, uh, definitely. I started playing it, and it and it wasn't necessarily for me. Uh, I was more into like Need for Speed, or, like more arcadey stuff then. Uh, but man, um. I, I remember buying, uh, was it Gran Turismo 4? And, and, pu- and, you know, testing it out and looking at, the, looking at the graphics on 4. Yeah. Okay? And it's going, this is like PS3 quality level on a PS2. Yeah, they had it. They, they had it figured out. Those games on the PS2, I never owned a PS2, so I only played it for the friends, and I loved it. And I when I was over there a lot. A lot, a lot. Now, I'm pretty sure I know what my six is, but I'm going to double check just to make sure. Okay. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah, Number played. six. I haven't played it yet. Uh, this game, okay. So, it can be argued in, you know, whether or not the, how good of a game this is, sort of. Uh, but to me, I, 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 I will defend this game to the death. Why? Well, okay. It was 2006 by the time I played this. Or, no, 2005. It was 05 when I played this game for the first time. And this game had been out for two years already on the Xbox. I didn't have an Xbox. In fact, I was sort of anti-Xbox at the time. Uh, um, I've always been a very <laughs> staunch Sony uh, and PlayStation <laughs> supporter. Pretty much since the PS1. Uh, I, I took that that left turn instead of getting a 64 like some of my other friends and bought a PlayStation. So, obviously, I got a PlayStation 2, and then one of my other friends got the Xbox, 
And I played his Xbox, and I was relatively against it. I didn't like the controller that much. Um, I, I, I was just like, what are these guys doing in our gaming, you know, community? What are they doing here? You know, are they trying to, like, take over? Like, what, like, what is this? Like, this is, it seems like they just sort of, like, took everything that, like, Sega had and said, oh, we now have a system. And then, made, you know, beefed it up. I was anti-Microsoft. Kotar's the game that made me get an Xbox. Huh. Uh, I b- actually borrowed Rob's Xbox and his copy of Kotar to play it. Wow. Yeah, he's like, you need to play this game. He go, I'm like, well, crap, I don't have an Xbox. He goes, borrow mine <laughs> and You're play gonna mine. You're going to play it. You're going to play it. Yeah, and I played it, and it was the very first game. Of course, I played GTA. So I, I there, there, are, there were already games where you could be a complete asshole. But to be able to play through a Star Wars game, and you can be the bad guy, right. essentially... You know, you can get into conversations and be a complete dickhole and, you know, strike people down. And it it is a very early 2000s stiff live action RPG, except, you know, I, I say live action with the loose terms because you click, you say, click this, and then he does it. So it's like, it's not like you hit, have an attack button and he does that. They figured that out for Jade Empire, but... Uh, this was an old. You had like a menu, and he's like, you can line up attacks. It's like you're do it. You do this attack, and then do the special attack, and then heal yourself. You know, you right. sort of like lined up uh, moves, and then of course uh, uh, there wasn't. I, I, I don't necessarily think that there were cooldown times. For uh, I, I think there may have been for like uh, force stuff, but you but you had like a force meter and a health meter. So if you had if you use more force stuff, you had to wait for your meter to fill back right, up. Right, right. So so there were there there there, there was an overall cooldown. Um, but man, the, the level of storytelling in this, I, I've never played a Star Wars game that was a new Star Wars game with new characters completely and have it feel like a Star Wars game. This is a hmm. brand new Star Wars experience from the ground up. There is new music in the game that's not Star Wars music. That sounds like it fits, should be, yeah. should be in Star Wars. Huh. And the, the worlds they build. Some of them, hey, you've heard of them. Tatooine, Kashyyyk, uh, Dantooine, sure. But you get to go to Manan, a fully ocean world. Then you get to go to um, Korriban, the, the, the Sith homeworld. Yeah, which they brought into the animated series. Yeah, but I mean, like, a lot of the, you know, for a lot of the stuff, this for this is your first time seeing it. And it's like, oh, God, this really expands it. And it's set so far in the past that it doesn't necessarily affect what happens for the original trilogy or the prequels or anything like that. Right. So it, that game, okay. And of course I played Kotar two, which is a good game in itself, but the first, it it didn't beat the first game as far as storytelling in my, in my opinion, Uh, they struck gold. I mean, and this is, this game is the reason why they did mass effect because they had so much fun making a sci-fi story and making a sci-fi game that they said, we want to do a sci-fi game, but we want to do our own. We want to, you know, take what we learned here and then make our own. make our own universe with it that can have nods to Star Wars, Star Trek, Babylon Five, uh, Stargate. We can have all that stuff in there. That's little winks, you know, because we want it to be a tribute to, to to sci-fi, but yet we own it, and we don't have to we don't have to adhere to this thing because it's Star Wars. We don't have to adhere to this thing because they own this over here. This is completely our own creation, and it literally, uh, I, I would count uh, Kotar as being one of the it, once in a while, you'll get one of those games that just hits you, and you'll you're never the same after. Well, I'm gonna check it out, but I mean, I got my. There are only a handful, probably in my entire life, and maybe by that notion, maybe I should count the came a higher, the like the what it is. But it really like it was during an era where I, me being such a big RPG fan, and I had a big drought of RPGs that weren't delivering on that level. Right. This one did, and was yeah. it really freaking stands Filled out? The void. It did. That it void. really did because I've, I I played through that game three times, because uh, uh, I played it when when I borrowed it from him, and then I went and bought my own system. In 05, when the 360 was coming out, I'm like, everybody's turning in the original Xboxes. I'm like, I'll I'll, I'll take one. I had a D Day. I went to I went to GameStop, got myself a used Xbox, picked up Kotar, Kotar Two, and Jade Empire all in the same day. Huh. And and I picked up Kotar one and Kotar two, and the guy goes, "Oh, sweet man, you like these are awesome game, awesome games, man. They were freaking cool." By the way, 
if you like these games, you'll like this one. And he handed me the special edition to Jade Empire. He goes, made by the same guys that made Kotar 1. He goes, it's, it's it, you know, it's like Chinese Dynasty stuff. And I was really into Dynasty Warriors back then. Right. You know, fun game. You know, I like the era. I like the, you know, the like the mythology and everything. And he goes, he goes, he goes, he goes, if you like that stuff, you like this. I'm like, deal. you got it. So I picked him up. Great. My six. Oh, man. It's it's hard to it's hard to fight over a couple of these, but mm-hmm. I would say twi- no, yeah, Twilight Princess, Zelda. All right, I, I got I got two, mm-hmm. but Twilight Princess is just um, I never got into the Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. I didn't have a sixty four, mm-hmm. but I did have a GameCube when it came out. Interesting that like you know. A lot of people stick with, you know, what they were going for. Like, uh, I had a PS1, so I was dedicated PS2. Dreamcast interested me, but I'm like, ah, I can't get one. I'm getting a PS2. a taxi. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got to say for that. I wanted one, but I, I knew I was getting a PS2. Um, yeah, see, I just, I actually went from Xbox, or no, PlayStation, well, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega, PlayStation, because it was this new thing coming out, and, you know, discs, what's up with this? My dad really was actually into it. He actually was the one that got it, and I just happened to Mm -hmm. want it. And then I actually waited for a long period of time. I played my PlayStation 1 forever, and then I got an Xbox, and then a GameCube. Actually, I got the GameCube first, then the Xbox. But I, I used my PlayStation for uh, at least at least the whole time the PlayStation was out and 60 to 70% of the PS2 era. What was cool is that, for me, going going to the PS2, and they have backwards compatibility, um, so I got to play the brand new PS2 games, but then during the drought when there was nothing else that coming out that I wanted to play, I right. could just go right back to my PS1 stuff without hooking up my PS1. I, I know, I know. And that was cool. I know, but that was, for me... I just, I, I really, I really didn't do, I, I, I wanted to go, I really didn't know what I was doing. I, I had, everyone around me had other stuff. So what we would do is they would just be like, hey, you want to borrow my 64? Mm-hmm. So I pulled the 64 over and I, once they got a new, like a PlayStation 2, they pretty much gave me their 64. So then I'm stuck in the 64, you know, and then I, and then I was done with that. And then it's like, okay. So, okay, so you, so you played the, you know, so you played Twilight, that, and, and that's your entry. You played that on, on the GameCube, because that had a dual release that came out yes. on the GameCube and the Wii. Because, honestly, uh, I missed Twilight for quite a few years until I got a Wii, and then I ended up playing I, it on the Wii. I picked it up the day it came out, and um, I played the crap out of it. Because I didn't like playing it on the Wii. And then when I when I saw a video of the GameCube, when I'm like, I need to get this, and I tracked it down and paid more than what I wanted. And then, then they said, we're remaking it for the Wii U. It's like, mm. yeah, right? <laughs> yes. yes. Anyway, um, my number five for me is Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, the people who uh, at least know, uh, uh, you know, if Nate listens to this, he can he he's, he's going to know mine because uh, I've already said it. I've, I've um, it's been said to multiple people uh, in the in the past what my top five are. So I don't even have to look at my little cheat sheet. I, I did for uh, ten, yeah. for, for ten to six, and I actually double checked to see where I put this one because I know which ones go where after this. Right. But Link to the Past, man, this this was a game. I never played the original Legend of Zelda. I didn't own an NES. I played quite a few NES games, Mario three, uh, you know, definitely. But I, I played original Legend of Zelda much later. Link to the Past was my first one. Yeah, mine too. And opened it, you know. I was just like, "What is this?" That at the time it was a massive open world. Oh yeah, uh, you know. I remember just... being stuck on the book. Remember getting the book? I had no idea what was going on. Where you had to like dash into the little yeah, bookshelf. Into... Yeah, I had bo- no idea bookshelf. that you could do that. Oh yeah. I I ran around that game for hours and hours and hours trying to figure out what to do, and then finally one time I accidentally ran into the shelf and it fell down and I was like, "Really? That was it? Really?" And then you use that book to get into the second yeah. dungeon. Yeah, and I was so <laughs> mad. I was so mad. Oh, that damn book. Um, yeah, man, Link to the Past is amazing. Uh, just uh, give a little shout out to uh, Link Between Worlds, which is sort of like the oh, pseudo man. sequel. Really good, really well done. I, I it was really cool callback to it, uh, and while being its own thing at the same time, but. Uh, Link to the Past takes my number five. Uh, for mine, <laughs> for my number five, 
Mario Kart 64. 64, interesting. I yeah. played, I can tell you, countless hours with my neighbors of playing Mario Kart 64. And I know that a prior list that I've done, I didn't add it in there, but the more I think about it, the more that I had so much fun with that game. Mm-hmm. And Donkey Kong, or Diddy Kong Racing, back when those games really started to come up and like, you know, your multiplayer racing games, because I was always a racer. Mm-hmm. And then those multiplayer racing games come up and you're like, oh! <gasps> Oh, yeah, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you, and then that—that's when it started the end. And you're just like, it, it was that more along the lines of, just I want to beat the shit out of you in this game. So that definitely breaks my top five. It's surprising. I, I the more I thought about it, I was like I, I really enjoyed that game more than I really let on. My number four is Metal Gear Solid Three Snake Eater. Really? Yes. Um, huh. Uh, it's very easy for me to take any number of the Metal Gear games. Uh, they're the first one, okay? The first one is the one that was like mind-blown, captivated story because um, it was the first one that ever made me said, I'm not going to bed until I beat this game because uh, I was near the end. And I, I knew I was near the end because I got the Metal Gear. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I, I must be near the end. Right. Uh, but in GS3, it's a bit of a slow burn, kind of like The Last of Us. Yes. It's a bit of a slow burn. But my god, the story is so deep and dense. What's cool about 3, okay, is that 3 is pretty much in the same boat as 1. Where you can just come into it without having any knowledge of what's going on. Right. And just so, here. Because it's because 3 is set in the past. It's set so far in the past that it doesn't, you know, you, you didn't have to play 2 to play this one. It kind of helps a little bit. Right. But no, because really what 3 is doing is that it's building off of... The little, like, the major plot twists of two, and it's sort of like going, now we're going to go back, and now we're going to tell you how <laughs> some of this stuff started, uh, yeah. but we're not going to spell it out for you. you got to figure it out for yourself until four when they said, all right, here's everything. Here's all the questions that you need answered. Yeah. Um, because literally, I played three, and I had more questions and answers added on to what came after two, because to play two, you have to play one, pretty much. It's like... You, you play one and you, then you play two, but three is just sitting off by itself. It can be its own thing. Right. And it is a masterpiece of storytelling. As It, it has so many twists and turns, and I want to say that uh, Ocelot is like a triple to quadruple agent in this game. <laughs> he's something. He's <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, it is hard to follow uh, on your first playthrough. But man, uh, the more that you play that game and the more that you realize that things aren't really as they are as they tell you. Right. And then you start realizing certain things and the way certain people talk, the way this happens here, the way this is here, and then you have a revelation. It's one of the very few games that, that brought tears to my eyes at the end. Wow. Um, so, um, it's, yeah, it's up there. It's, it's really up there for me as being, a, a, you know, as I said, The Last of Us is, 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 is an experience. This game is an experience. It, You know, Kojima really captured lightning in a bottle with this game. Huh. Um, because I mean, the first one's great. Second one's, you know, it's it, 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 it's good, it, it, if not great. It definitely has some flaws. The first one's phenomenal. I remember playing crap of it. Uh, this one took that, and they said, "Let's see what we can do if we put it with a Cold War spy stuff." That'd be cool. And they just. I get to play them. Uh, no, the, the three. I can't wait for you to play three and then beat it and come into work and go, dude. That was. That was pretty impressive. I gotta do two first. I have to stay in order. Well, well yes. Oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, no. And, and I definitely want you to do that because two, uh, I don't think you're gonna leave two with the same feeling as one, but three is, it's it's more than two and it is, it's different enough from one. Right. Because I could easily put one on my top ten list. Yeah, I and, too. You know, I mean, and, and I will say that in that big long list I had to choose from, one was in there. But when I started making decisions, started trying to put stuff here and there, as I said before, I didn't want too many, uh, too many games from certain series dominating my top ten. I I can't help it. For me, that's fine, but and I'm just... not completely uh, I'm not completely uh, you know against that. I was just trying. I'm like, if I had to pick one Metal Gear game, three is it? Three would be it. Huh? And uh, it's interesting. And and, it is. And, it, and, it, and it beats out one because one left me with this game is amazing. Three left him with, these guys took have gone so far in storytelling. 
I thought four would be it. Four, really all did. four, it, four is an experience, but unfortunately, four isn't as fun to play. Huh? Right. Uh, because four, okay, four, it, 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 okay, so you have one and two, and then four is like the next entry timeline wise. Right. But then you have three in there, and then so three is set before one, and then you have three. Long patch of history. Right. The original Metal Gear, Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake, Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid 2. You have all that history leading up to 4, and you have all these unanswered questions. Right. So they have to answer a lot. I mean, there is a lot of times where you can just put your controller down and watch it. If, and it's amazing, and it was awesome. I, I was so into it. I wanted I wanted to end this series. And to me, it was an amazing end. And then they added more. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, so that was my number, uh, number th- four. Number four. Mine... Which we've already covered, Link to the Past. <laughs> I, I'm Zelda. What I, I'm, in, I'm kind of a Nintendo fanboy. I really like my Nintendo games, but mm-hmm. definitely that game, like you said, it was just. I remember buying it. I remember buying it, and it was thirty dollars. I remember paying thirty dollars for it, and being like, I wonder what this is. Like you know, I bought it off the thing of it was Player's Choice. I think that was the thirty dollar one. I, I want to say it was. And yeah, was like, yeah, sure. I was like, all right. Well, yeah. there's also not much on the cover to let you know what it is. Right. And I was just like, okay, what is this? And I started playing it, and I was just like, oh my god, this is, wow, this is like, and that basically started me on my path mm-hmm. of RPGs. That game, excluding one of my other top, so two of my other top ones, that really set the tone for me to be like, okay, this is the genre I love. It, it just that world that being immersed in that world there's not a whole lot of dialogue or you know not some super long drawn out story it's just hey say the princess but you have to do these steps first well there was conversation with Shrashula <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> how do you say his name I, sh- sh- I, I want to put his name into Microsoft Sam and see how he pronounces it I want to do it too I don't even think they have Microsoft Sam on computers anymore but that is my four alright my number three is Mass Effect 2. So, when I said that I didn't want too many games to, to dominate the top ten, uh, I could have made the exception for Metal Gear, or I could have made the exception for Mass Effect. That was a tough call. And I probably could have made the exception for, for like another series. but I was hoping that your Mass Effect 2 would be up there, because you really tried to sell me on, you need to sit down, play through them, one through three... And just run it with one character from mm-hmm. beginning to end and just don't stop. Well, because, you know, you did. You started at three. I did start at three. So, you know, you definitely have the disadvantage. Three is a great game. Yeah, sure. But it isn't anywhere near my top ten. Huh. Um, it isn't. Like, it, could that game possibly be in my top 20? I didn't write it down. But, you know, maybe it could be. Yeah, sure. Uh, it was fun. It was great. But it wasn't. It was it, it, it was lacking the magic. I, the one thing that I would say that really saved Mass Effect Three for me was, of course, the multiplayer. Uh, some of the storylines ended. The Krogan stuff was great. The Quarian stuff was great. Uh, then the Citadel DLC was just absolutely amazing. Right. The problem was that it wasn't in the original game. <laughs> so, Mass Effect Two, Vanilla, is a great character piece. the The storyline. In comparison, if you take the original Mass Effect, and while the gameplay, I'll, I'm, I'll just, just no way of bullshitting it, it kind of sucks. The storyline's fantastic. The game, if that game, if there was never another entry in that series, it could have ended there. At two? No, at one. At one? At yeah. one. It, you could have had one entry, yeah. and that would have been it. It sort of leads you, to, leads you to think that, oh, danger's still looming, right? You know, our, our job isn't done. You know, da, 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 da. kind of like those ones where they're feeling it out. They want to know where the the people are with it. Like, oh god, this is amazing. We'll we see, need another one. But they, it was basically on that teetering where they could have ended it, but they could they could have continued. It was always designed to be a trilogy, from what they say. It's like even from the first one, they said this is going to be a trilogy. Uh, so they already knew that what they were going to do with it. Huh. But it's just the way that the story for the first one's laid out. Uh, the of course the first game has to introduce you to everything. Right. So that's why a lot of people think it's boring, but it has like I I loved it so much and got into it. I I would sit there listening and to to the code to the main codex entries, learning about all the races and the history, eating a snack. I would go get a snack, pause the game, go to the codex, and just absorb the information there. Huh. That's how I tell people to do it because they're like, ah, oh, what's the deal with the Salarians? I'm like, 
go go to the codex. He goes, I don't want to read it. I'm like, go get a snack, chill out, and read. It. And you know, eat, you know, eat, eat like eat a bowl of ice cream, and just you know listen and absorb it. If you want to know what's up with the Turians and why, what 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 happened in their past, you know, with you know, you know with the humans, it the codex, first contact. yeah, first contact war, they will tell you. And, you know, if you don't, I mean, it'll tell you in the game, sure, yeah, it'll give you like the you know the the sort of the runaround. But if you want to know in more in depth stuff, the main entries are all read by a narrator. Right. The side, the secondary stuff that really goes into stuff, you do have to read that. But Mass Effect Two overall story isn't as good as one. It's a very simple. Humans are disappearing. We need, we need to go figure out what's up. Oh, well, this might be dangerous. Yeah. Um, might not come back from this one alive. Better make you know make a team. So you spend the whole game making a team. And then doing missions for those team members to get to gain their loyalty to go, yes, I'll follow you to the death. Right. You know? And it, it's the interactions. It, and every single team member, uh, you know, to me, at least, is interesting enough to to get into that with. I mean, they all have their own little things. And I, I do like more members other than, other, other than others. But Mass Effect 2 takes the gameplay home. It takes the story home. It takes... The interactivity home. They introduce the the renegade parigade inter, like interrupt system. Oh, I love that. So where you can just end a conversation by you know being you know uh, you know saving the day or being the better guy or just being a, a complete asshole. Mass Effect Two. I'll never forget that was the second game ever that I bought where I came home and told my wife to shut up, leave me alone, do not talk to me unless it's absolutely necessary, and I'm going back into the bedroom. You leave me alone. I did that with MGS4 because I was so antsy. Mass Effect 2 had me in a frenzy. That was the first collector's edition I ever bought. <laughs> I had it pre-ordered. I left work. I was, I, I was still temporary. Um, I left work. It was the end of January because it got pushed back. It was going to be in November, but it got pushed back to January. And uh, I remember stuck, I was on day shift as a temp. I was getting ready to get hired on in the next week. So that was pretty much the last... Uh, Hurrah! And I remember uh, a good friend of ours uh, hasn't been on this podcast yet, but it, yet, but has been on uh, Journey to Comics. Wes, we, uh, aka Westicles, Westicles, was living with me at the time. He goes, "Oh, I can't wait for you to get that so I can play it." And I'm like, "You're not going to play it until I'm ready for you to play it." And I, I know that sounds like a dick move, but you have to understand, being in a home with three gamers, when <laughs> you get spoiled on stuff, I got spoiled on stuff from for Arkham Asylum and for Infamous and. Because of that, I didn't play either of those games until at least a year and a half later, because I, I just got so sick of seeing him in the living room playing games. And to his to, to his credit, he would go into his sort of room, <laughs> had a bunch of stuff in it, and play stuff in there. Or you know, and and he would play in Rob's room if Rob wasn't home. But it was the same sort of thing where I didn't want to be spoiled. And I'm like, if he buys it or rents it, that, that hey, fine, play it all you want. I'm I'll be in my room. Right. You know, but. You know, if you didn't have the money and he's expecting to play my copy, uh, on the on the 360, it's two discs. So you start the game, and you play to a certain point, and then you go to disc two. So I gave him disc one. Then with Mass Effect 2, you get to the end, and you go back to disc one. Yep. And for, for as odd as that is, I came back out and goes, and I say, I need that. And he goes, all right, I'm, I'm doing this thing. It'll be about an hour. I'm like, well, wrap it up as quick as possible because I'm beating this game tonight. And then once I'm once I beat it, you can have it back. Right. The, and then you can play it because by the I can't remember where he, he was doing some sort of mission and I'm like in like don't start another one uh, as I want to beat this tonight Mass Effect 2 um, man I bought all the DLC for that damn game uh, I Mass Effect was amazing Mass Effect 2 is when I became a diehard fan of that series like I was already hooked but this one said I live here Right. You know, Mass Effect 2 is the game that put this on the level of Metal Gear Final Fantasy for me. You know? Yeah. It bumped Resident Evil out after the Resident Evil, you know, kind of gaffed some of their last yeah. games. That, cause that Because that used to be up there, too, and that got bumped to the side. It was like, nope, Mass Effect's here. Uh, and then, of course, newer series have sort of, like, sort of you bumping up in there. All this, you know, Persona series is great. Uh, you know, you know, it's kind of creeping up there. It's not there yet for me, but, man... I, I can't say enough about Mass Effect Two. Matt, back. Uh, the thing is, is that I, I let Matt, our, our our good friend Matt and coworker, borrow Mass Effect One. Said, so, you know, you need to play this. 
He goes, man, I'm not really feeling it. And I'm like, all right. I'm like, try this one. And I just gave him two. I'm like, he goes, I don't know. I didn't really like the first one. I'm like, you'll like this. He fell in love with the freaking yeah, game. He fell in love with it. And then he, he, he every day he'd come to work, he'd be so excited to talk about it. And I'd be excited too because nobody I worked with likes Mass Effect uh, other than Neil. Neil loved it. He, and, you, yeah. yeah, Neil loved Mass Effect, but then he left and I, I didn't have anybody else to talk to. So then Matt gave it back and then I gave it right to Jay and said, here you go. Because Jay tried the uh, demo yeah. for three and he wanted to, you know, he goes, hey, can I borrow that? And I'm like, he goes, he goes, I really don't want to. I really don't want to play one. I'm like, look, there's a. Uh, if you download this uh, little preamble for two, you can actually make all most of the, the decisions from one, and get the backstory to one, and then play two. Two is more similar to the demo, and he played it. and Goes, you're right. This is awesome. You know. So he played two, loved two, and then he played. Th- and then we all played three together. Yep. Uh, but I'm done rambling about two. So, yeah. yeah so that was my number three. As your number three. My number three is Tales of Symphonia. Tales of Symphonia! I had a, I had a feeling that was up there. Uh, you know, I, I actually had pulled it all the way out, but then I took World of Warcraft out because that was more of a... I love the game, but there's, the story is just... It's awesome, but... No, Tales, Tales was one of the... I actually bought it not knowing what it was at all. I literally bought it on a whim. I, I just saw it, and you know they had one copy left, and they're like, you know, we're this looks cool. Getting, we're not getting it again, so you need to go ahead, you know, GameStop, and I bought it and played it, and I played it and played it and played it. I've got hundreds of hours logged into it, and then um, the game that you showcased today, mm-hmm. the uh, second, the Dawn, Dawn of the New World, Dawn of the New World came out, and it's it's great entry too. I feel like it's one good story together. I, I like to put them together. I'm one. looking forward to playing and beating Symphonia and then going on to Dawn of the New World because Dawn of the New World starts in a way that I'm like, well, why, why is he the bad guy now? Yeah, they explain it later on. Okay, but... right. It, it sort of starts off, I'm like, what's going on? I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> yes, but <laughs> Tales of Symphonia is a phenomenal game. It mm-hmm. is one of those RPG JRPGs that you're just like, oh. And it was the first game rpg that i played that was not turn-based right it was more of an action based the tales series has always been that way yeah and i never had played anything like that well i started playing it and it, i believe that i kind of wish final fantasy would have really kind of maybe done an entry or two like that like like uh, like maybe eight or nine been like that i still love the games don't get me wrong phenomenal games but i felt like they could have Made it Twelve happen. is sort of like that, but I sort of like liken uh, Twelve to being more like Kotar. Yeah, but, Twelve plays a lot like Kotar but to me. The the game, like the unison attack, where you mm-hmm. can all your characters can combine their moves together, but you have to do them in a specific order. The that's actually the second game that I ever played that had ultimate weapons, and the it, it's 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 so much fun. And then you have like a bean that I've never beat before. It's like the uh, the lead. The, I don't know his actual name, but you have to collect these relics. They're ancient weapons. Is this like an optional boss? It's an or? optional boss. You do not have to spend them. It's in the Temple of Darkness, and you collect these seven or all the ultimate all these weapons for each one of your characters. I want to say there's seven. I think there's seven. Don't quote me. But then you combine them together in this one guy, and he becomes this ultimate being that is harder than anything in the entire game. And you have to sit and like. It's like the first fight that I actually had trouble with mm-hmm. outside of the uh, Emerald and Ruby weapon. Now, so, uh, now, Tales of Symphonia was originally exclusive to the GameCube. Yes. And then the second one was on the Wii, which is really neat because Nintendo gets its own little uh, series of like you know ex- exclusive titles. PSP had the um, Tales of the World. Well, uh, okay, the the Tales series is not exclusive to Nintendo. Right. The, the Symphonia, Symphonia series. Uh, the Symphonia uh, entries were until a year and a half ago, two years ago? Is that when the HD versions came HD out on PS3? The HD version came out two years ago on the PS4, which was... No, PS3. PS3, that's right. Uh, because it had one, and yeah. the original, and then, then the second entry. Which well. is what I purchased it on, because, as you know, the individuals of those are quite pricey. And to transfer your data over, you had to have the game. When you got the GameCube one, you played through the GameCube one, and then you, had you to actually your take your memory, memory card, card and put it in the Wii. Trust me, I transfer it over. I have a Wii U. I don't have an original Wii right now, and uh, 
I can't do that. <laughs> because it said, hey, you can get stuff if you transfer your... I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> Which sucks because there are certain versions of, of the Wii that took out the GameCube components. Uh, like, the original model of the Wii had the GameCube stuff, like the slots and the controllers uh, supports, but then they took them out. And then if you get the Wii Mini... Which I don't know why anybody would buy. That doesn't have that stuff either. In fact, you can't even get online with the Wii Mini. You can't even like yeah, download it's... stuff. And you, it, but um, that being said, I'm gonna go on to two. Chrono Trigger. I knew it. Um, Chrono Trigger is a game that I never got to play on the original system, which was Super Nintendo. I played it on the PS One, but I rented it. Mm-hmm. So I didn't get too far into it because it, it came with another game. It came with Final Fantasy IV. So I was like, man, I'm playing two games, two RPGs. Stupid idea for renting. Because <laughs> yes. it's like, you can only play through one of them at a time. I mean, Especially in a 70, or, well, let's say, 30-hour game. Right, well, if, you know, definitely Final Fantasy IV is that. The Chrono Trigger is actually one of the more shorter RPGs I've, that I've ever played. But it does a lot with less. And, and that's why I scored so high. I didn't actually complete the game until I got it on the DS. And it's... As I said before, for Kotar, there 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 comes a comes along a game only so often that really hits home. I enjoyed it. I, I haven't beat the whole game. I mm-hmm. think I'm at least to the part where you get Frog for the second time. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, so I haven't made it through I, the far, but when you start really, it, it, the game does time travel really well. The, the game has an interwoven storyline that is more than what it actually seems when you get into it. The, like when you get closer to the end and you get to see uh, this guy's here, this the, this is this, you know, without giving away too many spoilers here. But um, you have a voiceless protagonist, and they do that very well. the 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 gameplay, the system of the battle system, is phenomenal. I, I definitely like the the combination attacks. Yes, the, the like the tech attacks. Uh, I think it's what, I think that's what they're called. Uh, but they, yeah, you can do uh, dual or or trio attacks and then combine your stuff and do it all together. Which they made that more defined. Square made that more defined in nine with VV and um, Steiner. Steiner. Yeah, where, where you can do the magic sword and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, they did that too there. Um, but this one, it it just does it so well. And what's cool is is that there's always like no matter what your party setup is, there's only one character who doesn't work with anybody else, and right. you, you don't have to get him. Uh, he's like an optional character, but it's actually more awesome if you get that character because he's a badass in himself. Yeah, actually, you can have him be by himself and then have the other two team up and right. then do your stuff. That's how that setup sort of works. But storyline wise, it's amazing to have that character in there because they 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 do a couple of of ending fake outs. Where you think, oh, I'm near the ending. No, you're not. Yeah. You think you know what's going on, but you right. don't know. Chrono is amazing. I I got the original. That was my first boxed game I got for the Super Nintendo. I got a great deal on that. Uh, of course, showcased in my pickup videos here on the channel. But <sighs> that game, that game, <laughs> Where's you out? that game was amazing. Uh, let me just say that, like. What uh, that was one of the first games that came out where you can do New Game Plus, where yes. you can take uh, you know everything that you have and just start the game over again and enjoy the story and you know uh, actually there's a way that that you can beat the game in 12 minutes, huh? Because if you're already met like because the game isn't that hard, the game actually is is not designed to be that difficult. Uh, that's the cool thing about it is that uh, you know that there are some fights that can be tough, but man. Uh, if you're already maxed, you know, you know, not maxed out, but if you're already, you know, know what you're doing, you can go in there and you can kick some ass. Right. And, uh, man, it, it, there's like 12 or 13 different endings. Yeah, I remember you saying that. There's yeah, a lot. Really cool. All the art's done by the guy that did, uh, did Dragon Ball, which I'm a fan of. So, already, okay, you have the teams of Square and Enix before they combined. That was that was a thing that made that merger seem like it was going to be a badass thing, and then it didn't really turn into a badass right, thing. Right? Yeah. Uh, for, for you know for you know, for many years, but you have a lot of things combining. You had you know the Square Magic, you had the Akira Toriyama artwork. So hey, I'm I'm already at home, and then you have the music, who was done by one guy. He gets sick. Yamatsu comes in and finishes it. So right. he, so he has tracks on there too, and it's it, it's amazing. It's a good mesh of all these different awesome things and. Um, 
it's definitely, uh, I tell you what, and I've mentioned this to you before, man, it teeters on I, uh, where it's at. And the, only, and the only reason why number one gets what it gets is because of a technicality. I'm pretty sure that our number one is exactly the same. Probably because you said you because you said you took out WoW, so I know exactly what your number. Yeah, one you is. know what it is. Yeah. Um, so my number two is Super Metroid. Mm-hmm. That game, I, I had the Super or I had Metroid Two for the uh, handheld Game Boy, mm-hmm. and I loved it. I played it a lot, but that game. I remember I used to go to the Boys and Girls Club, and that's where I first got it and started playing it. And, oh my goodness, that game, I just, I, at that time, side scroller shooters, I mean, Mega Man, mm-hmm. all those games, oh, yeah. we were all into those at that time. And that game it took it to another level because it was, you can definitely tell the Mega Man ish style of it, but it was open ish world, but 2D. Right. So you could go, like, once you got all these other stuff, you had to go back to older places you couldn't get to. Backtrack. And you'd backtrack it through. So it's like you knew what was going on, but when you opened that door, something new. Mm-hmm. And now you have to figure it out. It's like a puzzles among puzzles, but it weren't hard puzzles. It was just fun. Like, now I can literally go to that game and not even think about anything that's in it. I can just play it. And a lot of it's just reaction where I know where everything is. It, it phenomenal game for me. And it was just, it set a new stage. Still one that I need to get. I have the original, and I have um, the, the the Game Boy Advance games. And I have, um, I, I'm missing Metroid Prime 2, which I said in the pickup video I was going to get, but it was empty. Yes. <laughs> so, I, and I've got I've got most of the games, but I do need Super, Super Metroid. I do have it on the Wii U. I bought it, I, or I got it for free. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, saw, I do have it, but I don't have a physical copy. But... That series in the Metroid series, it got better. Yeah, Prime. I mean, I I say that you know I love Metroid Prime. It, it is I I hundred percent in all of these games, and that game, I loved it. It was the the first real first person shooter outside of, um, Goldeneye, that I really got into. Well, the Perfect Dark, Goldeneye, mm-hmm. Error, and it I love it. I love but that entry is the one that said it for me. It's like, this is my series. I love this series. It is a bit different for me to go back to Metroid Prime, as great as it is. Uh, you know, if you play any newer first-person shooter to go back to that, you're like, whoa, this is controls way differently. See, for me, it's 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 home. It's home. It's See, home for me, because I've got that stuff embedded in my hand, in my mind of just like, click, shoot, 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 shoot. I know what needs to be done. Now... Knowing us, what really kick-started off our friendship, we know what number one is going to be. Yes. So we're going to make our listeners wait. And I'm going to read off a list of honorable mentions, stuff that was on my list that I had to, like, weed out. Okay. And I'm not going to talk too much about them, but PS1, Final Fantasy IX. Yes. Uh, Final oh, Fantasy IX okay. uh, is, is probably, man, one of my second favorite uh, Final Fantasies. I mean, you, of course you've got... Two and three or four and six, amazing games. I mean, I'm not gonna. St- I, I I can't. I, I two. I own every version of two, now. <laughs> so I mean, obviously I like that game. Yes. But nine, man, nine was nine is sometimes viewed as the odd man out. Uh, but I think it is like the quintessential. Uh, well, it's but, PS2 time. Yeah. Well, yeah, because PS2 had already came out. Uh, speaking of PS2, I I have GTA Five uh, Vice City. Uh, because uh, I remember uh, getting that day one. I got that day one, and I could easily put MGS2 here or put Final Fantasy X. A lot, right. a lot of that stuff's very easy, but I definitely wanted to give Vice City a nod because I played the crap out of Vice City. I, I like the 80s. I like the 80s music. So as a whole package, man, it's pretty cool. And then I'll put one of my honorable mentions in there. Huh? Wow. Well, yeah. Wow, I have the most time in a game in Wow. And it just the story of it is is great. Mm-hmm. It, there's a lot to it. There is a lot to it. But as a, it's it's not in my top ten this time because I love the game, but a lot of the game was repeating itself, and it was you needed to farm for this item, just like any of the other games that we really play. But it was on a much grander scale. Like you would have to farm for you, and then you'd go and help somebody else farm for them. And yes. Then, yeah. You so had to, you had you, to help it, it other was, people. Yeah. 
Um, PS3, and, I, and honestly, I'm just reading down like the list of where I started, uh, you know, figuring out my top games on each system. GTA 5, back to back GTAs here, I know, but GTA 5, as we mentioned earlier, freaking phenomenal. They had that is a rare game where you have a combination of different um, elements: shooting, driving, uh, you know, open world, right. where everything's done right, yes. everything feels right. You know, GTA 4 didn't feel right. Like, it was a big open world game that had driving and shooting, but the shooting is a little off. The driving is a little off. You know, it's still a fun game to play, but GTA 5 said, here it is. Yeah. We took our time. This is the perfect masterpiece. PS4, I only have one entry other than the one I put on my top 10 Dragon Age Inquisition. That's a great game. Uh, that game, uh, game, if it wasn't for Uncharted 4, would be my still be my top PS4 game. But I know, I know. I haven't. I'm not playing too much PS4, uh, so I'm missing out. Of course, I haven't played Witcher. I haven't played uh, you know a, a lot of a lot, like a lot of stuff that's come out. But Dragon Age Inquisition, man, uh, for for people dogging on um, a Bioware, for people dogging on Bioware for missteps with Dragon Age Two and then uh, Mass Effect Three, this was like their return to form. It's fantastic. Game. It, it was phenomenal. Uh, I absolutely loved my my Inquisitor. I, I loved his path. I loved. The the decisions he made weren't always the best, or the um, or 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 even the <laughs> or even the uh, the the uh, correct ones. But I loved how flawed he was as, as a person. Remember what I had to do with mine because I screwed up everything and uh, lost all of my healers yeah. at the end. Uh, yeah. Uh, going on to the uh, to the three sixty uh, stick of truth South Park. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, and funny. I will put Mass Effect three here, but I'm not going to talk about it, but. Uh, Stick of Truth surprised the crap out of me. It's yeah. Holy crap! Yes. <laughs> uh, and and I guess I could say it as an honorable mention because it was actually on the list, but I didn't like. But I counted it out. The first Gears of War. First Gears of War was no, fun. I hate that series. See, I think it's a really cool co-op series. I, just, I don't. I don't know. I did never. It never grabbed me. I never got that. Oh, this is a great game. It's kind of like, eh. It's just whatever. Well, see, it t- Gears of the, the first Gears of War is the reason why modern-day third-person shooters are the way they are. It revolutionized third-person shooting. It, it, it the, the, That's the reason why we have cover shooters, is because of that series. When that series came out, it was, for me, that was first-person shooters. I was into the first-person mm-hmm. shooter style, so that game, pretty much, I played it, and I was like, I hate the controls, and went right back to first-person shooting. Uh, the, see, the first Gears, now, I feel like Gears, pretty much, the more they go on, the worse they get. Uh, the, I, I'm not going to say that there's a bad game in there, but I was deeply disappointed with 2 by not bringing anything new to the table. See, that's unfortunate, too, because um, you, usually the, the franchises get better. I mean, and, and, and maybe it's just me, but I feel like what really shined for the first Gears was, you know, you can play through the campaign with you and a buddy, and you guys actually had to work together. You would go on different paths. One guy would go over here, one guy would go over here. And so, you because it was in a team of four, and then so you would have one guy and a buddy, one guy and a buddy. Then you'd come back together and all four of you would fight. And then I think eventually they made it to where you can have all four people be controlled over yeah, the internet. I think they did. But I honestly do, it, like there were some sections where you couldn't get through without another person helping you. Like there was a section where if you walk into the dark, you, you, you get torn up by these insects things. And then so somebody had to go up here, shine a light and hold it on you as you moved and move it with you until you got so far where you can uh, explode like a like a fire uh, like light, and that way other your other characters could pass through. That shit was awesome. And I thought it was really cool and innovative to do that, and I feel like the rest of the series is sort of like they did less of that as, as they went on. Right. So to me, that that's like the good part about it. Uh, but the, um, moving on, uh, Mario 3 for the NES. Um, right. That, that actually made it to my top, uh, or top 20, I guess. Super Mario Sunshine. Oh, yeah. That's one of mine. I, uh... That's another one of those games that I actually took the time to get 100% of, you know. Super Nintendo Turtles in Time. I like I like the game, but I don't really... I mean, I know that I had it. I had a Turtles game, but I couldn't tell. Turtles you. in Time is awesome. It's a great side scroll beat em up It has all the fun and, and the color and everything that you can imagine from the cartoon series. You have a mixture of bosses. They actually, in the Super Nintendo version, they actually had uh, bonus levels that wasn't in the arcade version. And you had, you had the Technodrome level, where you fought Taka and Razor from yeah. Turtles 2. And then you had another bonus level. I, can, I don't remember what that was like offhand. So, uh, N64, No Mercy, the WWF No Mercy game. 
And that is up there. That I'm getting a, I'm giving this, this is an honorable mention above all the other cool, awesome ass uh, N64 games because this was the perfect wrestling game. Huh. It was sim. It wasn't like it wasn't arcade. You know, it, everything was done right. Right. Everything was it, it, no game, no 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 wrestling game. And wrestling games have gotten bigger and better, right? They still haven't matched the magic of No Mercy. The last one, uh, Game Boy, Pokemon Red. Yeah, uh, I'm not. You know, I've never really been a super big Pokemon fan, which you know that. Mm-hmm. And I'm slowly starting to get back into it, which is funny because I'm a turn-based JRPG. It, it guy. is a very, you know, it's very uh, a good entryway to get kids into turn-based because you know uh, we have a friend Blaine who's been on the Journey to Comics. He's like, I hate turn-based. I'm like, you like Pokemon? Shut up! <laughs> right. That's like the one turn-based that, that you know that he's into, and <gasps> yeah, you know, it teaches you elements. It, 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 there is a collection aspect to it where you can like where some people get into it just to get, try and see if they can get them all. Some people get into it to, just to raise their team to try and you know have challenging ba- uh, you know combat battles where you've got to like you know you've got a you know, a selection of six. So you, you you know some people like will like well I got this type I got this type I got this type I got this type and then then you go to a gym and you've sometimes you got to you switch ones out because. They send one out that's stronger against the one that you're yeah. that is your main one, and you go shit. Okay, I gotta shoot this it's, one out. It's, it's definitely a team building game. It is, and and and, and, and it's pretty cool. Uh, now that we bullshitted enough, though, uh, number one is Final Fantasy VII. Oh yeah. And I know some people probably roll their eyes at that, but FF Seven was probably the first. I wasn't into RPGs when I was growing up, so I missed, uh, you know, Chrono Trigger, FF Two, FF Three, FF One, even on the, on the NES. I missed a lot of that and didn't play that till later. FF7 was the first one that I sat down and went, what is this? And I didn't get into it. Yeah, first time I played it, I didn't get into it. It was later that I, I, I went back to it. Because, I mean, I when I got FF7, I got it with in a bundle of three games that my dad bought from a friend at work. I got Tomb Raider and Twisted Metal 2. Right. So I got, okay, so I got uh, Guns and Boobs, Guns and Cars, and then this game that talks a lot. See, for me, Seven, <laughs> I saw Seven come out in one of those magazines, mm-hmm. and it was talking about it, and I read a little bit about it, and I was like, this this is awesome. Like, after Zelda and all that, I was like, oh my god, this is it. I know I want it. And it came out, $40, brand new. Was it $40, or was it 50 Was that a 50 one? I want to say it was 40 I, I want to say it was... I, I don't think too 40. many games went over 40 because I, I know that uh, I, uh, I picked up, I got FF7 um, probably in late 98 early 99 because i i beat it and then right around the time i beat it they were hyping up eight to come out black friday is when i got mine mm, okay that's when i remember getting mine was and that black friday in 97 or 98 i want to say it was 97 i want to say it was the year they came out because it came out in uh in september 97 i want to say that's so when i got, yeah i was about a year after it came out when i got it and oh, then man. that's because one of the games that i still have to fight back tears that game, okay, FF7, I definitely, uh, when I got into it, I got into it. Um, yeah. I said MGS1 was the first game that said, I'm not stopping this game until I beat it. Um, you didn't have a choice with 7. Well, no, with 7, it just kept going and going, 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 going. Yeah. With you know, with Metal Gear, the, it was much different. It was much more like a 8, 9, 10 hour game. With, uh, I think my first game of FF7 was over 50 hours at least. Um I didn't beat any of the optional bosses my first time through. In fact, I had a hard enough time beating Sephiroth my first time through. Oh, now, yeah, now yeah. you know, now it's like it's nothing. I, I, you know, I, I like I can breeze through him because I know what I'm doing. But like, isn't it funny? Like your first time through the game, you and you get to the end, you beat the game, and, and then you realize I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah. Uh, FF8 was that way for me because I didn't understand the 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 I didn't understand all the junction system. When it first came out, I'm like, I, I still really don't understand it. Uh, now, dude, I can teach that crap, and that 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 could be a whole cl- uh, course in college where I can teach somebody the junction <laughs> system, and just teach people how to just basically cheat the game by you're grinding in a different way. But right. coming back to FF7, uh, FF7, uh, it, it has a lot of flaws, and that's why I've said before that Chrono's teetering on it because I feel like Chrono doesn't really have any flaws. And I, I think I mentioned this to you a couple weeks ago when I first talked about this, where I, I, I kind of feel like Seven is suffering from uh, from being dated, and that Chrono doesn't necessarily feel as dated because I feel like time has protected Chrono a little bit more because 
Chrono was made during an era where they really had 2D graphics down. Right. So they didn't have to worry about that. If it's, it can feel dated to somebody who doesn't like 2D graphics. Right. But, you know, FF7 was the first, one of the first, if not the first, it's 3D. The, the first. The 3D. first, uh, you know, 3D RPG. So it's dated in graphics. It's dated in translation. <laughs> My God, this guy are sick. Uh, you know, this guy are sick. You know, uh, there's another thing that she says that Eris says when she first meets, uh, first meets Cloud. You know, this is a church in the slums. It suddenly fell down, crashing and down. You know, it suddenly came crashing down on top of me. She's talking. To, she, it's meant to say you. You came you know, crashing you know, down. On top you know, of you, you came crashing down through the top of the church. Yeah. No, it made it made it sound like the church was up there, and it came crashing down on top of her. And she goes, "My flowers. Hey, they're safe." And then she's just there. Hey, how's it going? And I, I, and honestly, my first time I played through, I thought the whole church came down with Cloud. Well, it looked like it. <laughs> well, because it was all run down, and I didn't I didn't understand it. It wasn't until later that I you know like, oh well crap this game is kind of poorly translated. Unfortunately, there's you know uh, there's other translation issues throughout the game, but yet they still got like you know Barrett's speak right. <laughs> right. And, you know, so like it definitely has some some negatives to it, but that. On a technicality for it being the first, I still give it number one. And there, you know, honestly, I can ar- I can argue and say that nine's a better game. It is, but there's something special. There's is it nostalgia maybe that makes it this because there's something so special about it. Well, here's here's the thing with me it was like with seven, you which you do technically have dedicated healers, but you could kind of make you know red thirteen. A healer. A healer. Yeah. Or you can make, I really wouldn't make Barrett a healer, but you could. Right. But you could you can make some action with the material. I love the material system. That's what I love. I actually, you know, uh, Eris was my dedicated healer, and then she dies. Come on, if you haven't. Yeah. That's not a spoiler at this point. But after she dies, Cloud sort of became my healer. He was my, yeah. Uh, and Until I used Yuffie, and then was blown away. I didn't use Yuffie until you said something. I actually used whoever, like Red 13. That's... My party, uh, Barrett? became a lucky charm for me because I remember I got stuck on Demon's Gate and then I restarted the entire game because I was stuck in there. Because and you didn't go back and get your material from UP. Yes, I, I was without material. I was stuck in there without material. I was actually made it all the way to Demon's Gate without material. So, hey, points for me, I guess. Uh, potion, but potion, potion. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I had enough items to heal myself, but just using attacks, I, I couldn't beat Demon's Gate. So I went back, I started the game all the way back over. I bet now you could. I bet now you could take Demon's Gate with no magic. I bet I, I know that I could. I know I could because, I mean, the last time I played it, I got Omni Slash on just one. one. Yeah. So, like, like my, my like my level alone was, like, enough to, like, de- like, Demon's Gate was a breeze last time I went through. I didn't even have to try. Just one Omni Slash. Uh, not even that, dude. Even with normal attacks, I, I, I could take him then. But the first time through, I wasn't, I, I ran away a lot um, it, because I... I wanted to get to the story. I'm like, oh, the story's awesome. I want to. I, I, I don't want to fight. I want to. I want to just do the story. That you're not supposed to run away unless you have to. Um, but unless you're fighting the uh, what is it the the snake the big guard snake. <laughs> oh god. Well, actually, you know what? Last time I played through, I actually beat the crap out of him because I had meteor rain, and then I actually got beta before yeah, I beta. even before I even went to the cave, and that was rough. But you know, I mean, you, th- you think about it. I can do that now because I played the game enough where I grind in certain spots. Uh, we all have our dedicated spots. Uh, so, like, I always make sure that, like, I have Clem Hazard for Cloud before I even go to the Shinner Tower. Yep. So then, by that token, I can get Meteor Rain and then use Meteor Rain uh, as, as a finishing blow to the Midgar Solemn because by the time you get to him and for him to use Beta, you have to get him to the point where he's, like... Below 1,000 health. Yeah. 2,000. So then... Uh, by that point, he's already taken two, one or two people out of the fight, and then you need to be able to have make sure that your enemy skills on the one that people who's left. And then you like I was waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, and then he did that. He did beta, and I learned it. And I had two hundred health left, and I hit him with meteor rain and killed him. Yeah, because <laughs> he killed Red Thirteen. Uh, and then uh, thankfully, uh, I think Red Thirteen had the enemy skill on, but he learned it, and then I finished the fight, and then got it oh, yeah. or was it him or Cloud? i don't know i know i got Either it way. uh seven for me was uh you know as i said before one of those rare games where it's an experience and uh th- you know through and through uh by by default 
as I said, I, I do think FF9 is a better game. I mean, you can even argue saying that, you know, 4 is a better story, 6 is a better story. There's something magical about this story, though. Yes. To, to the point of the, it's one of the few that they've extended and given more story to with Crisis Core. <laughs> Before Crisis. Uh, the movie. Uh, Event Children. And then you have uh, Dirge of Cerberus. Dirge of Cerberus. Uh, yep. You know, so, some, some of the quality in those varies up and down, but... Um, you know, there's something special about Seven for me, and I can't wait for the remake because I want to. I want to have that same feeling again. I don't know if I'll get it, but I want to. That'll be the game that. Well, I will tell my wife at the time when we get married that you leave me alone. Don't talk to me. I don't. I don't even want to see your face. Well, this is it right here. Yeah, we'll see. It, uh, I'm. I'm thinking that Andromeda. I want to play Andromeda. Andromeda might not be that way for me. I'm talking Mass Effect. Family doesn't know Mass Effect Andromeda. I might tell her to leave me alone, but it's kind of harder to do that with a kid. Because yes. you, 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 you can't do that. You're like, kid, leave me alone. I'm playing a video game. Yeah. No, you, you come on, man. You gotta be a dad. So, yep. uh, that's our top ten. We almost went two hours with this. I know. Uh, we, we almost we went an hour with top ten almost. Uh, pretty much. Uh, in fact, I, I think we went over than that because I think when we started, we were at like thirty minutes or something. Yeah. So, uh, definitely, thank you guys for listening to this uh, kind of a longer episode of this podcast. Uh, what are your top tens? You know, what are some of your favorite games? Definitely comment down below if you want to, and uh, you know, like this video. And uh, hey, subscribe to the channel that way you don't miss any of these episodes. Because not all of these episodes, guys, go to the main channel. In fact, we try to keep it here, uh, it, like if we can. You know, the E three episode did go up to the main channel, but that was more of a bigger news thing. This isn't, so uh, we try to keep it here and keep you guys uh, having you know. Journey to Comics all over the place, whether it's on your phone on the go, whether it's dedicated here, you know, we want you to, you know, engage with us. Check us out on our social media on Facebook, on Twitter, on GIC Podcast. We're doing a little bit more over there trying to engage the audience. We're on Instagrams too. You can check me out on Instagrams, Brandon Games. Mike There's no content. No, I'm not I'm not even gonna plug yours until you, you have don't a picture. Even plug mine in here because I don't I don't even put pictures up. I have all the pictures taken. I, I can say that. I, I have about twenty seven pictures taken. I just haven't uploaded them. You, I'm like, well, that you know, I am. I don't like Facebook, and now that Instagram is more like Facebook. It's not like Facebook. It has the same algorithm for adding people. Like all I get now is porn people. Hey, check what? out my boobs and my thing. I see, that. okay. If I get stuff like that, I block it. Uh, I block it, but I have it. My profile set to private, and it still doesn't stop them. Well, see, okay. I have mine to public. Okay. And I, the only people that I get are mostly just video game people. Once you start getting into the community, uh, you'll get less and less. Uh, since you have an account and you don't use it, you get a lot more of the spam. I'm, I'm assuming that's what it is. I don't have any content on mine, so I need to really get that. Like I actually have all the stuff made. Like the little lady made all that stuff. I'm just. I would you. Know, I, I would start and start rolling it out. And just basically what I do is that when I have stuff like that, I do one a day, and then pick like. You know, we're on day shift, so maybe when you're on break at like 8 o'clock or, you know, 8.30, just post it, up. post it up and then what? Uh, have like all your tags that you want to use. You, you can have that saved in like a, like a note yep. thing and just uh, highlight it, copy it, and put whatever you want to say for each game. Like, hey, I bought this because of this and I think this is cool. And yeah, I, just, I, gotta get back, I gotta get back on top of it. You know, I mean, I really enjoy uh, being a part of the uh, retro gaming community on Instagram. It's really cool. A lot of cool people. And then, I mean, every once in a while, people might sell stuff, and I'm not really going to do that, but I might. You know, who knows? Maybe if I, you know, because, and then, they, 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 you know, people on Instagrams and the retro community, they have meetups, and, yeah. they, you know, they do that kind of stuff, so that's really cool. But definitely uh, check us out over there, and then subscribe. Subscribe! We, 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 we want to get our content to as many people as possible. So yes. definitely, I mean, if you dig what we're doing, uh, subscribe and uh, stick around. So until then, uh, Mike, thanks for coming. Thanks for having a talk. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you guys for listening. We will see you later.